That's right, we are back at it. We are working on the RX-7. Now I know it feels like it's been a while, we've had a lot of things going on, but we have to get this car ready for the upcoming season. So we have to get some of this maintenance done and out of the way. We have some parts that came in, well at this point, uh, end of last year, uh, gonna get those installed. And overall, we just have to have this car ready to get tuned on the dyno. Now for those of you that have watched part one and part two of this rebuilding the RX-7 series, you know we had a little tiny bit of detonation last year. We had some setbacks, we put her back together, and we're coming out in this new season harder than ever. All right, no time but the present. We have started pulling the car apart again. We got the elbow off of the throttle body and intercooler pipe, and that gave us all the access we need to reach down to those spark plugs. Now, if you watch my Rotaries Are Awesome video here, you'll know that there are two spark plugs per rotor. That's right, we have a leading and a trailing spark plug. So that means we're swapping out four plugs today. So good old YouTube Trends is telling me you want to see the actual work being done, the down and dirty. Guys, this is a one-man show. I'm going to try to make it happen. For right now, we're going to go ahead and pull these plugs out and take a look and see if they're okay. Listen, I know this is just mundane maintenance. I promise once we get out of this cold, wet, miserable New England weather, I'll be putting together a full RX-7 build video going through all the details. But for now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this plug. And to be honest, it's a little wet, but it doesn't look that bad considering we detonated. And that's a new one going back in. Now, for those of you that are rotary owners, you know that this is the factory BUR9 whatever spark plug. And you're probably wondering, hey, you got a big turbo, you're doing a lot of boost. How is that working? Well, our IGN 1A ignition setup is more than hot enough for the street power we're doing around 20 pounds of boost. Now, when we go E85 and we turn it up a bit, yes, we're going to be swapping out these spark plugs for a colder set. All right, we got the new plugs in place. We got all the wires hooked up in the correct order because yes, L1, L2, T1, T2, it does matter. Now with that out of the way, we're gonna move on to draining the oil again. Now, I did drain the oil before the last startup, but we had a really rich situation uh, where the map sensor was just throwing too much fuel. So I wanted to go ahead and drain the oil again, just to be sure. And of course, we're filling it back up with Valvoline VR1, I know. I'm not sponsored here, though I wish I was. I've been using Valvoline VR1 in all of my cars. My Evo, my RX-7, my Porsche, it's honestly the best stuff around. I also noticed the other thing that had failed was the factory radiator fans. We had only one spinning and, and that really was not good. So went ahead and swapped out to the RX-8 retrofit and these work much better. It's a stock housing with RX-8 motor and fans. So let's move on to the parts. The first one we have is from LRB Speed, and this is gonna work with the new fans. This is our radiator cooling panel. It's gonna go right on top. It's gonna be an aesthetic upgrade, but it should help us with radiator cooling performance as well. All right, let's test fit this real quick. And look at that, fits like a glove. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this hardware for the replacement that was included in the kit. It came with some threaded studs, some nylon spacers, and some wedge nuts to lock it all together, and some adhesive padding so we don't scratch the paint. Now in theory, this should help the air flow through the radiator, not over it. All right, that's done. I think it came out great. I'm probably gonna get it powder coated black, but that's for another video. Next up is the brake booster kit from JP3 Motorsports. It relocates from running over to the ABS to going right into the side of the intake manifold. Now, unfortunately, mine was welded shut. I'll have to bring it to a mill, but this is what it should look like. Shit happens, that's car stuff. I figured let's move on. Let's grab this JP3 Motorsport pre-mix container kit and throw it in the driver's side bin. But of course, in typical 90s JDM, the bottom of my bin is missing, so that's not gonna work either. So what am I gonna do? You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go over the parts that I was able to swap. Now guys, I am getting better with the whole you guys wanna see the stuff actually being done. It's just tough when you're on your own. But we got the center console swapped. We got the shifter bezel swapped. We got the shifter boot swapped. We got the e-brake boot swapped. So we did pretty much the entire center section. You can see it's kind of sitting offset. And that's because when I was replacing it, I noticed that the HVAC panel also has broken clips, per usual 90s JDM. 
So I'm gonna wrap it up here. It obviously hasn't been my day. I'm gonna put my tools back and I'm gonna walk away. And to those of you guys that made it this far, if you could like, comment, and subscribe, let me know what you guys are working on. Spring's around the corner. The new season is almost here.